40 large container ships pass through the Panama Canal every day, and soon there will be even more. Panama has been profiting from global trade since the U.S. turned over the canal to the Central American country. Work continues day and night at the world's largest building site. It's running behind schedule. The shipping channel is being dredged and broadened at a cost of just under 4 billion euros. Two more locks are being added to the three existing ones. Hans Santa Maria is an engineer who's been working on the project for four years. He says the canal will need almost twice as much water as it does now. One special feature of these new locks is that there are water-saving basins right behind them that trap up to 60 percent of the water so it can be reused. If climate researchers' predictions are right, Central America will get less rain in the future. On the campus of the University of Panama, the history of the canal zone is depicted on information panels. Sociologist and environmental activist Ricardo Martinez tells us the authorities won't release exact figures on the canal's water requirements. With every passage through a lock, we lose millions of liters of fresh water that flow into the ocean. That water could be used to supply the people in eastern Panama, who suffer from permanent water shortages. The government doesn't give Panamanians water and Panamanians don't benefit from the canal's profits. We can see that, instead of benefiting the population, the expansion will serve the financial interests of the international shipping companies. For years, Martinez has been collecting data, documenting the effects on the ecosystem around the canal. His organization, Ecological Voices Collective, has been using this data to put together graphics, analyses, and tables. Among the greatest dangers of expanding the Panama Canal is the accumulation of salt in the lakes and its impact on their biological diversity. That means native flora and fauna will be damaged by the exchange of fresh and salt water when the new locks are used. Panama City, the country's capital, profits most from the canal. About 10 percent of exports and imports from the U.S., for instance, are shipped through here. With a metropolitan population of about a million, it's a mixture of old and new. In stark contrast to the modern skyline, the buildings of old Panama City, Panama La Vieja, are dilapidated. In the rundown Old Town, fashionable residential buildings will soon be built with apartments few Panamanians can afford. The redevelopment has caused Panama La Vieja to lose its status as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It takes a good two hours by bus and dugout canoe to reach the Imbera, an indigenous people. They used to live deep in the rainforest. Some fled to the slums of the capital after being displaced. Now, several families have built up a new existence not far from the canal, Imbera Kera village. A dozen families live here, maintaining their customs and traditions. Now they hope tourists will come. A day trip costs just under 50 euros. Their leader, Jobel Dogarami, says the canal expansion threatens their way of life. The water level of nearby Lake Gatun is being raised to accommodate the new locks. Part of the waterway leads right through the lake. This marker was put here by the Panama Canal Administration. They said the water would only reach this point during the rainy season in October. You can see similar markers over there. That's what the canal administration told us. If there's more water, it will flood our land. The water is already dangerously close to the village. We don't know if the water will rise, and we don't know how long the rainy season will last. 
so we're worried. But we hope the water doesn't rise and we can stay in our village. Hans Santa Maria says the project is six months behind schedule. His crew is under time pressure. The first giant ocean-going vessels are expected to pass through the canal in 2014, 100 years after it officially opened. Every extra day of construction is costing Panama millions. The expansion will allow the canal to remain competitive in the international maritime world. And because it's our country's most important asset, it will continue to offer all the advantages it's provided up to now. The shipping channel will then be considerably wider. It's hoped Panama will profit from the giant container ships and invest the money in the country's infrastructure. <laughs>